like I hope I hope the government's trying to be bad and they're like doing stuff for like a big conspiracy type of fucking purpose because if they're not then the government's just incompetent in a world four friends one mission to bring freedom to everyone involved dude what the fuck are you doing I'm doing the thing for the podcast did you say the name <sighs> fine it's the freedom friends podcast <laughs> Dude, I know they're cuter when they're little. You still can't call them that. God. What, collectible? Yeah. Yeah, that's no way to speak about children. Well, oh, I was about yeah. to say, puppies are totally collectible. <laughs> <laughs> puppies are collectible. <laughs> oh, man. I'm out of it. Yeah? Yeah. What's yeah, the matter with you? It's just been a day. It's yeah, been well, a day. He slept just, funny. His head hurts. Mm. That's true. My head does hurt because I slept funny. Cause my hair hurts. <laughs> this is going to sound fucking stupid, all right? but my hair hurts, even though I don't have hair. Like, have you ever done that? Have you ever like slept a certain way? And like the way you slept, like push the hair back into your head yeah. and it feels like somebody hits you in the head. Yeah. That's I, what, I suppose that's what I'm going if through. You right had now. Like stubble. It would be worse. That's what it is. is I, my, my hair is just coming back from after I shaved it. Right. And it's just long enough where it's like pokey. And it fucking hurts. Like my head hurts. I like how he's he's trying to hide the domestic abuse. I, I slept on my hair. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fell down the stairs and I'm I hit like, a doorbell. I'm like, I 100% know down. your wife. She punched you while you were sleeping. Dude. That was a. <laughs> well, I legit asked her. Uh, and, 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 and by the way, uh, fuck both of you. Because when I told you both this, you both were like, she probably hit you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why? It's because both of us. And I, I think I speak for John on this one. <laughs> you probably deserved it well yeah or Pro- will pro- or probably or i will yeah. <laughs> yeah that's probably what it is i probably like cheated on her in her dream or something and then i got punched <laughs> <She woke up>. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably Fucker. what it was yeah. i'm mad at you i'm Why? sorry do do? i'm sorry i'm worthless in my dream, dreams. Like, wait, i am, i have no control over your dreams it doesn't, doesn't matter doesn't i want to i want to i want to throw this out right now none of us talked about any of this before the show no no <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, Mikey just admitted that those were two independent <laughs> conversations. <laughs> does, does Michelle beat you in your sleep? No, but I get accused of a lot of things in her dreams. <laughs> so, so, yeah. She's in the audience tonight, so I'm a little on guard. About it's this. a it's a universal <laughs> issue. Well, yeah, she probably wants to make sure that your misogynist is gas isn't going to like shit on She Hulk or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, She Hulk is just a dude. Yeah, it can't I'm be because you're, <laughs> it can't be because it's bad. It's got to be right? because you're it's a misogynist. Yeah. It's yeah. just like Captain Marvel it was just a bad movie. It Was a bad movie or yeah. fucking. Uh, and what broke my heart Look, black widow wasn't a great movie it was a bad movie yeah like yep. the the new fucking female ghostbusters was, was a, a bad, bad movie, movie. Yeah. it has nothing to do with the strong female leads or anything it's that they're pandering. you know it was a great movie with strong female leads or tv series 1883 huh. it was awesome yeah, yeah. actually yeah. the yeah. precursor mostly, show to mostly to driven, driven, which is about those, women fr- those frontier yeah. women were fucking bad yeah. or look at yellowstone man beth yeah, Beth fuck. is a gangster. Yeah, right. right. Like she's amazing. Like that is a. Yeah, everybody like, thinks. If like, I ever had a daughter, I wanted to be like her. Like, <laughs> fucking a. Like just I don't know. Bad yeah. as fuck. I don't Any know basic white bitch just looking for that reboot for your personality for the rest of the year because the Capricorns and Gatorade or whatever the fuck your excuse is for changing your personality. <laughs> just go look at Beth and change your shit to yeah. that. Everybody will just respect you. Capricorns like, and Gatorade. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck it works. <laughs> Kind of, we're going to pick a mythical creature based on star patterns that aren't even accurate to the current position of the galaxy because, oh, I don't know, space moves. Yeah. But that's somehow going to predict my fucking future. Where yeah. did where did Gatorade come into any of this? I don't know. Retrograde. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Instead of retrograde, oh, he said words. Gatorade. Words with meaning. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I fucking appreciate Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, Not a sponsor. Won't Not a sponsor. sponsor. Yeah, no. But these are our sponsors brought to you by warfightertobacco.com. Use that code FTFO. That'll score you a sweet 15% off discount over here at warfightertobacco.com. These fine gentlemen's fucking establishment. Uh, Owellness.us for all those CBD needs. Use that code FreedomFriends25. That'll get you a quarter off your order. And of course, IC Tech Coolers for the... Because it's still fucking hot and you still need a cooler. And hunting season is upon us, matter of fact. Uh, so you're going to need good coolers for that. Check I gotta, out ictech.com. I got to lay code freedom friends 10. That'll get you 10% off. What? I got to lay eyes 
on that massive icy tech cooler. Did you look at it? Holy fuck. It's fucking massive. It's, it's a big motherfucker. What is that? A 200, 270. 270. 270 quarts. Those are the ice bath ones. Yeah, yeah, that thing's fucking huge. Yeah, it's fucking massive. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. not even their biggest ones. Wow. That's like, impressive. Like they make fucking ones that people turn into like. They do understand that past that, that's just a refrigerator. <laughs> right, like they've without, been told it's without a, a motor, it's an appliance. It's so like, like an environmentally friendly refrigerator. You built a refrigerator and then just quit when it came down to function. You were just yeah. like, "I'm going to build a refrigerator case." So but. when I when I hung out with them the other day, last week, two weeks ago now, uh, they had um they had this one. It was fucking huge. I don't even know how big it was, but it was like the size of a fucking hot tub. And yeah. he was like, rednecks have made these into hot tubs. They literally put pump systems into them. It's probably cheaper than an actual hot tub. It is. <laughs> it's like those it people is. that you see that turn the, um, what are they, stock tanks? Yeah. yeah. You know what they're called? The big silver yeah. fucking things. Yeah. And they turn those into like fucking little mini pools in their backyard. Yeah. So for all yeah. those do-it-yourselfers out there, what's the discount code again for Freedom the hot Friends tubs? 10. Oh, there you go. He's like, code Freedom Friends 10 over at Icy Tech. <laughs> <laughs> Build your own redneck Riviera in the damn backyard. Damn right, man. So damn their, right. Their biggest cooler they have is 1,100 quarts. Yeah. Wow. And I looked and at I, I looked at I a 270. Yeah. I have a... I have yeah. a, I have a Holy a, fuck. I have okay. a 110. It's gigantic. That is 10 times bigger than my 110. Yeah. How much does it, does it have the weight of it? Just the empty cooler? Uh, let me check real quick. It's, it just says all of it. It's got to be 250 pounds. Okay. How do you even, what are you doing with that? So, uh, like, can you explain it to like me? Like, one of the big ass, like, kind of like big, a little bit bigger than one that's that 270. Uh, I don't know what it is. It might be a three something, but Yeti makes it. But they make like a soft pad on the top. And I know guys that mount them in their boats yeah. for ice. Oh, holes. and it's a bench seat. Plus and it's a the, bench seat. Okay, yeah, yeah. See, nope. That makes I sense. Yeah. Totally get that, right? So uh, the, the eleven hundred is two hundred pounds. Yeah. Two hundred pounds. Like I went. That's not that bad. I went, actually, until with, you uh, fill it, <laughs> the well, fucker ain't moving. Yeah, you put, it, you put an eleven hundred pound elk in it. And yeah, I suppose it's I heavy went to uh, you have to quarter Willie's ice house. <laughs> and Willie's ice house maybe used to have those big like steel tub things that they kept all the beer in when yeah. you were standing in line to place yeah. your order, so you could pull your beer. They've replaced all of those with those giant fucking. They look like the fridge in all of our first apartments. It's just on its fucking side. Yeah. It's that now full of ice and whatever. And it's like, okay, I get this. Like yeah. you have however many hundreds of people that come through here a day and you just keep ice and beer in it. Yeah. Cool. But I'm looking at it going like, like I have one of those rotiform coolers and it's on wheels and everything. And it's just a huge pain in the ass. Like it's just so inconvenient to move that fucking thing around because it weighs so much. Well, that 1100 quart one, like you need a fucking pallet jack. Forklift? Yeah. 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 It actually, uh, it has the little stand. Uh-huh. So you can get a forklift or pallet jack. It's made for oh. it. It's yeah. got the little... Yeah. Leg and it's made for it. it's made for like industrial fishing and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, you sure. know, so like they can fucking put like their fresh catch in, keep it on ice or whatever. They could just fucking pull up to a dock. A fucking sky track comes over. I mean, that's what it's for. You know, I mean, there's obviously I a. I don't. I've never had that problem. Well, it's because you're also not a commercial fisherman. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, I'm, apparently, I am the poor. Yeah. And I, I yeah. don't. Uh, I mean, same. I don't need to pallet jack my cooler around. Yeah, you're just not a Glosterman. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't have a job that <laughs> requires right. me to not right. pronounce half the letters in the right, name. <laughs> new, new word. What, what's the word mean? What? What's that word mean? Gloucester. Yeah. So there is a place called Gloucester. Gloucester, Mass. Which is actually spelled G L O U C E S T E R. Didn't need to know that. You just don't pronounce everything in the middle. You know what? It, well, what is it? Scott probably it's a, it's town, a, it's a town and they in go fishing. Oh. Do you remember that movie, The Perfect Storm? Yeah. yeah. They it's were a, Gloucester. That's uh, Gloucester. Gloucester. Oh, okay. Scott so they get on a boat and they go out and they yell at each other and they catch like three fish and then they come back and drink. Scott probably mm. would have spelled that right. Accurate. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I, <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. But maybe. I'm sure I spelled it wrong, but I, I know there's a C in it the only, and you don't pronounce it. The only, for no, the no, only no, words no, I you spelled correctly. Up, if you bring up Worcester. It's the same. That's the same thing. There's a C in that <laughs> fucking word the too. The only words Worcester I and Gloucester are spelled the same except for the W. The only words I spell correctly are the ones I can sound out, which I learned in kindergarten. And I haven't got past that. There's like six. Silent letters. I don't. I, He's still I like, don't get him. There's a lot of shit that just shouldn't can, exist. Kniffy, kniffy. Yeah. Tahi, tahi. You know the biggest one that actually bothers me is the word phlegm. Phlegm. P H. P H L E G M. Yeah, I would have got that wrong. Fuck you. Yeah. F L E M, dude. But then Boom. again, I, I never would have got that wrong because I don't ever use that no, word. What is it? No, what's phlegm short for? Because it's 
short for like a long medical term, I'm assuming. Loogie. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Looch. Yeah. Yeah. Lung biscuit. Yeah. Lung butter. Yeah. That's what it's short for. <laughs> but I'm curious what phlegm is actually. I don't know. But why the fuck producer? is there a G in the middle? Because I guarantee What's you, even in the long for? format, there's no way you're pronouncing that G where it goes like, oh, now it's phlegmatrosis or some shit. <laughs> Fleg- like pneumo- Fleg- pneumonia. <laughs> pneumonia. Yeah. Why the fuck is there a P in that word? Mononucleosis. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> Why are we going to make everything hard? Look at Justin's <laughs> face right now. <laughs> so actually, it's P H L G M. That's what he just said. No, there's an E in, in there. there. Yeah. There's uh, definitely an E. It's P H L E G M. I think it's just phlegm. I'm not seeing that it's short yeah. for anything. And that's just what's that's well, the definition. That makes it even dumber. Yeah. 100%. What's, yeah. The, what's the definition? Uh, phlegm is a type of mucus made in your chest. You typically don't produce noticeable amounts of phlegm unless you are sick with a cold or have some underlying medical issue. Yeah, when you yeah. cough and yeah. you get that lovely fucking lung Green. oyster that pops Green. into yeah. your mouth and you yeah. spit it out, that's yeah. phlegm. Gotcha. Yeah. And why oh, the sorry. fuck is there... When you cough up phlegm, it's called sputum. 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 See, okay. that's a fucking stupid... <laughs> yeah, but I can spell that. I can hear the word sputum and go sputum. like, all right, nope, got yeah. it. Yeah. I think damn near killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Wrecked him. Wrecked him. <laughs> damn near killed him. Fuck him. Jesus Christ. So, Jazz, you got a new uh, addition to the family? I do. I do. I have a, a lovely young lady now living with me by yep. the name of Freya. Yep. And, so, I uh, think of this. Uh, you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. How does this basic white wife fucking think about the new puppy? Oh, yeah. it's a puppy. Pretty excited. Yeah, it's, a puppy. <laughs> it's a puppy. Pretty excited about it. Um, her name is Freya, and she is a a GSD or a German a German Shepherd dog. Um, she's adorable. She is uh, very traditional marking. So she's she's a black and tan, and uh, she's actually a black and sable. Technically speaking, her tan is very very blonde, but uh, she's adorable, and she is young and clumsy as fuck. And, uh, Big old feet. That's the best. Uh, and she has no idea what she's doing. With sure. Anything. Well, she's like what? Fucking six weeks old, eight weeks old. She's nine weeks old. So, yeah. um, mm. and you know, she doesn't know who we are. So it's not even the whole like. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to see you. She, everything to her is just like, oh fuck. But like, <laughs> this is cool. Well, no, no, it's not. Here, <laughs> yeah, in a couple, so, here in a couple weeks, that'll all change. It'll all change. Yeah. But uh, she'll be like, you're fucking awesome. You're yeah. like, dude, you're fucking awesome. But right now, like, <laughs> I can leave the room and come back in the room, and she's like, who the fuck are you? And yeah. then like, so, but uh, she's very curious and very excited, which is good. Like, she's not one of these skittish puppies that yeah. like everything's scary. Like anything that kind of startled her, she does leave out. She does the whole like, yep, and then. As soon as she figures out that she's not hurt, she's like, all right, let's go figure out what the fuck this was. Uh, she's a good dog. She's a, we're very, very excited. I've, I've wanted a working breed for a while now. And uh, we're just finally set up to have one. Like Caitlin works from home. We have the house. Like yeah. we have the yard. Like, yeah, your condo before this wouldn't have, it wouldn't uh, have been a great fit. Wouldn't have been a good fit. No, and, it'd uh, been tough. So now it's, yeah, it's good. We're really, really nice. happy. I spent way too much how's money. The, how's the, your fucking evil ass shit bag cat? feel about it i haven't seen him in 24 hours <laughs> yeah. But, yeah he fucking uh, yeah. disappeared well he, we'll like, keep he, our fingers crossed for yeah. you <laughs> he wants nothing to do with that puppy yeah uh they had an interaction today and the puppy didn't give a fuck the puppy was chasing that cat down and was just barking and the cat was like walking doing the whole like <sighs> yeah. and that puppy was like oh it makes noise too it was like, <laughs> was like oh shit yeah yeah so, that'll, be, uh, that'll be interesting but I'm happy that the cat's an adult and the the cat will be able to get away from the dog. And the yeah. and the and it's a puppy. Sure. So they'll get used to each other. It's harder the other way around. Like you have adult dogs and then brought a kitten in, and yeah. that's a that's problematic. Well, they're, so, they're they're starting to slowly warm up. They'll be okay. Yeah. It's uh you know, but my cat's had like the run of the house. Oh, like, you brought you brought the stuff. cat in. Yeah, how's that going? Well, so you know we had two for a while. And we law and I and I put my foot down. I was like, no, I said one. And she was like, but and I was like, no, I said one. So, <laughs> right. so you still have two? Nope. We only got <laughs> one. Uh we, we basically we're on the list as a foster for that uh for that uh uh shelter. So they have two. Um no. They, we took a we took them in, they got spayed last week, and we uh basically left the other one and took ours back. Nice. Uh then we uh officially adopted her. Um because it was just easier. By the way, shout out to the fucking SP, uh, the USPA or the fucking S- the SPCA, SPCA in New Braunfels. If you adopt an animal from there, they give you like all these vouchers to pet stores. Hundred like percent, two hundred fucking yeah, it's a bunch of worth of food and shit, and shit and and yeah. huh. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, man, it's fucking great program. Like, 
It's pretty cool. They basically gave us like 24 cans of cat food. Nice. For free. Or I think it cost Haley like a buck 25 for yeah. like that, a collar, a tag, all sorts of shit. Like it was a pretty cool program, man. So, um, but yeah, we got, we're, we're slowly introducing the cats and the dog, the cat and the dogs rather. Um, Tessie's fine with it. My older dog, she's cool with it. Yeah. She, she's like, man, whatever. Kind of nonchalant. Doesn't really give a fuck. Tank just stares and doesn't move. <laughs> and that's what makes me nervous. Cause he's just like, Give just me, plotting just give me a fucking opening just give me a reason <laughs> i'm gonna rip this thing apart and i'm like dude don't you fucking do it you know like i've had to throw shoes at him and shit because he is like <laughs> god he's a fucking maniac and but yeah he just sits there and just like freezes and i've had to like physically like pick him up but he's still frozen and i'm like fucking chill out dude god like and i think that's where we lucked out with freya so freya the breeder's on a farm yeah. So they have like peacocks and roosters uh, yeah. and llama and like all this shit. So yeah. this dog's like, I like a cat. And so it was just something to kind of yeah. bark at and chase around. And he it wanted to play like it was yeah. doing the whole like, yeah, you know, play bouncing and all that kind of stuff. And the cat was like, yeah, fuck you. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> yeah, too old for this shit guy. Because how, so, old, how old is fucking it's only four? But that cat acts like it's like fucking 80. It, like it's just fuck that cat. If yeah. there's no if there's no <laughs> me. Uh, interfering with the lifespan of a cat. How long do they normally live? I have no idea. You can get fucking sometimes 20 years out of a cat. Yeah. Like, like, oh my God. 15, like, 18 years. <sighs> yeah. yeah. I've never known a cat to live that long. Yeah. They, they <laughs> fucking last long, dude. I mean, <laughs> Binks, I'm pretty sure is actually the spawn of Satan. So can't yeah. confirm. It could be 600 years out of that cat. I don't oh, know. It would have been like, it's going to outlast me. I know that much. seconds or so. And yeah, yeah that cat is, that, one. that cat is evil. Justin actually was over the other day and he was like, you know, if you were ever going to have a cat, this is the cat. Because what did you say? I said, if you were ever to be reincarnated into an animal, it would be Binks. Because Binks is super chill until someone comes over and then he's like, ooh, someone to fuck with. Wow. And so, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was like, your cat has figured out how to target the weakness in anybody that it sees and attack just that weakness. Yep. And I was like, I don't. He's like the fuck. I don't know if that's a compliment. He's or like, not. The, like, I don't. He's I don't like know the ox this. on fucking so this is Kung your, Fu Panda. This is your weakness, Mikey. My back fat at the time was it was a, <laughs> it was a, 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 a fucking source of of personal fucking reflection that he made me fucking <laughs> that he made me fucking realize. Jesus, uh, I sat down and <laughs> got bit on a fucking back fat. Now all Mikey does is GHD sit ups. Just fucking yeah, yeah. I'm just fucking constantly doing back fuck extensions, that cat. trying fuck to get that rid cat. of fucking. Fuck that cat. He's got a picture of fucking Binksy up there. I'm just like, Fuck you, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, John, what'd you get into this weekend? Uh, uh, did I went out to a piece of property that Hero Sports uh, hunts on uh, to help the landowner do some maintenance. Oh, we, you went out to uh, Pipe Creek. Yeah, we did some controlled burns out there. I like that property. Um, so the, actually, the blind that we were sitting in—a funny story. Did you burn it down. Oh, <laughs> Why am I not surprised? So the blind actually was destroyed just because it was old and beat up. And, hey, and all and fairness, whole when we went out there, what, six months ago, eight months ago? I think that was the last time somebody sat in that blind. It was rowdy. Yeah. I put a new one yeah. up over there. There's new blinds that are out there. And, new and that new blind made it through. Yeah. Uh, no damage to that. Um, but so all the cedar's been cleared out and it, it looks like a completely different place. Um, there's probably like oh, a. Oh, fuck. I'll go back now. Probably a, I don't know. 50 60 foot pile of cedar sitting in the middle of the field i don't know, 20 30 feet away from that blind yeah and uh you know we tilled up all around it to create a fire barrier and uh luckily he had a water truck on property um so we lit that bitch and uh i don't know if you guys are familiar with texas or not but it hasn't rained here in a very long time yeah there's probably, a lot of, there's a lot of fire probably bands. went up yeah. pretty quick so they lifted the fire ban at 3 p.m on friday and seven or and at 301, they no, lit that fucker. At, at 5 30 a.m. Saturday, he was lighting lighting piles. Yeah. Uh so this was the biggest one. And so we had another pile on the other side of the property that was going. It's already managed. You know, there's a guy over there feeding it, doing everything he needs to do. And he's like, Well, you ready to light this one? And I'm like, Yeah, what's the worst that can happen? And he kind of chuckled. I kind of chuckled. And we <laughs> lit that bitch. And it fucking went up. And it probably had 40, 50 foot flames coming off the pile. Jesus we're like, oh, Christ. this is pretty cool. We're watching it and everything. <laughs> and then I look like, you know, downwind from the fire and you see the embers are coming up and they're going back down and starting little, these little spot fires all through the field. 
So I run over there. He jumps in a bobcat. I run over there. I start stomping him out, you know, and gets to a point where you just can't stomp him out anymore. Like, yeah. it's too big. And so he's over there with the bobcat, you know, rolling him out, putting the fires out. And so I'm stomping a little bit. I'm watching him. And we're kind of like laughing, like, oh, this is kind of funny. And then it got to a point where, like, we looked and we were like, oh, this isn't funny anymore. Yeah, we're this, surrounded. Got, this just got real. We're surrounded by fire. <laughs> it's got really real. Yeah. And uh, this is what Dante was talking about. So I, tu- as I turn and I get like two pretty like quick steps going towards the side by side so I can go get the water truck. And uh, it wasn't that far away, but it wasn't right there. We just had it centered between all the fires just in case. Um, and as I'd like get two good steps, I all I hear is him scream, go get the water truck. And I'm like, I'm going. <laughs> so I haul ass over there, go get the water truck. And uh, the hose was out the back end of the water truck. And so I pull up and he tries to unreal the hose and it's stuck. And he's like, I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to back up. Right. So I start backing up as he's, you know, spraying with the water hose behind the truck. Well, I'm driving over all of this wet mud and, and dirt now. And uh, yeah, so it starts spinning. And I'm like, no, this isn't fucking happening. Yeah. So I start rocking it and whatever. And he's like, ah, he's like, we need to get back there. I'm like, I'm fucking trying. I was like, you want to get in? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, go for it. He jumps in, fucking same thing. He's like, oh, I didn't know it was like this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> so I floor it. I get out of there, drive all the way around the fucking pile. We get to the other side. We put it out in that the edge of that fire line is about 10 feet away from like uh, the, like a brush line that was all dead. Oof. And if they would have caught that, the whole fucking property went up. And we were like, "Woo, we're fucking soaked head to toe. Like, I mean, it was fun. It was a good time. But yeah. once we got it all put out, we realized, like, that was almost extremely bad. So uh, you had a little surprise trip to California. Just uh, Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was like, awesome. Yep. We were hot shots. We had some smoke jumpers come in, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Curl inside this bag. You'll be fine. Right. But uh, but yeah, and then Sunday I, I tried to hydrate because being around the fires and outside all fucking day long, I didn't realize how dehydrated I got. Yeah. Um, when you go take a pee and your dick's like. <laughs> it's just like poof. <laughs> like, oh, it just comes shit. out in dust. <laughs> yeah, it's like yellow powder. Yeah. Fun stuff. Um, Scott, what'd you get into? Oh, I didn't do shit. Uh, Is that the best? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's my favorite. No, I didn't do anything. Uh, I worked on the camper a little bit over the weekend. Got yeah. some stuff I had to do to it, so yeah. Because uh, yeah, I guess you just have like some general maintenance stuff because you rent it out and stuff like that. So yeah, I guess there's just a, like a general, so it, just kind of. It's new, but it had a it had a leak that we found through the rain, right? And so they caulk around all the shit up top, all the holes they cut out, and one of them just cracked, and so I had to go recalk some stuff and, and we'll spread uh, some cock. Yeah, throw the, the cock down. Use white cock. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have black cock. So. Well, I heard black cock's bigger. But it just comes yeah, out bigger. It, it, it lays down heavier. Harder, 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 harder to manage. Covers yeah. more area. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That tracks. Nice. I had a white roof and I don't like to use black cock on a white roof. You don't, oh. <laughs> That's racist. You don't like. Uh, it, I just, you know, you it, like, it looks funny. You don't, like, you, know? you don't like mixing colors, do you? I don't have an inner, <laughs> inner. <laughs> never mind. I'm taking this too far. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, Jesus. You guys started this. <laughs> do you see the look of disappointment on Michelle's face right now? I see her laughing. I don't know. What she's <laughs> about. I don't know By the way, Michelle, I like the blonde. She usually looks like a My Little Pony. I know. I saw. Her. <laughs> I like the blonde. Well, I saw her in Corpus. She had the blonde already. I, was, I yeah. haven't. I haven't seen you since you. No. Um. I didn't do. I didn't do. do I didn't do much. I, I was. I was working. Uh. There's a uh, number uh, of number of vets that uh reached out to Hero Sports for some uh uh counseling and assistance and stuff. So I fucking worked those calls. Um. Fucking. Weird, weird situation, and I'm gonna I'm gonna shout him out. His name's Michael. He's a uh, retired gunnery sergeant of Marines in uh, Louisiana, who reached out to Hero Sports and was like, uh, "Yeah, I want to go hunting. You know, I want to try to like you know hang out with some vets. You know, I'm starting to get a little older. You know, da da da. I'd like to like you know do some stuff for me. I do a lot of stuff for other people, and my wife's kind of on my ass, and I need to get out of the damn house type of stuff. And I was like, okay. So, um, they, but he basically was like, I'm a retired Marine. I'm a Purple Heart recipient, combat veteran, da, 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 you know, all this. So Barker sends me this, like the screenshot of it. He's like, you need to call this guy because you two are literally the same person. <laughs> give, give him a call. So I was like, all right. 
So I call him up. So Mikey called and was like, you have one purple heart. That's adorable. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you my nine. Like, it was funny. I was talking to, uh, so there was another veteran, though, that was an amputee that I called. And I was like, <laughs> and he started telling me a story. how He was an ID. And, da, da, da. and I was like, how many IDs are you in? He's like, three. And I was like, oh, I was in seven. I still got all my toes, pussy. And he was like, and he was like what? <laughs> it was funny. What? You called us. <laughs> but I'm, I'm talking this to is the- helping you. <laughs> Let so- me help you. <laughs> So, you don't think this is funny. I don't know. Yeah, like, then fuck off. Obviously, I had a rapport with the kid before I made the joke. God. <laughs> I'm not just kid. like, I'm not the Canadian VA. We'll get to that in a minute. You should do all your phone calls like that. You just answer and be like, how fucked up are you? Yeah. Not fucked up enough. Bye. <laughs> Click. <laughs> so I'm talking to this Michael guy and uh, he he was like, yeah, I was. he was like a friend of mine does this podcast. Uh, he's a psychiatrist and he's also a Marine veteran, Marine infantry guy who uh, got out, went to fucking Harvard fucking medical school and became a psychiatrist. And wow. I was like, what the fuck? You sure he's in the Marines? Uh, right. I was like, I was like, holy fuck, who's man. The, who's the guy? Uh, you know? I, I wrote it down. Uh, I'd I, like to know. Yeah, I'll, tell, I'll let you know. Hey. Um, so like I was talking to him and uh, I was like, oh, you like podcasts? And he goes, yeah, yeah. I was like, what do you listen to? And he's like, well, you know, he's like, uh, you know, he starts naming off podcasts and it's like the usuals, you know, like Rogan, and Rogan, two bears. Yeah. Stuff like that. Bros, like, he, that. well, he goes drinking bros when they're not being political, he goes, which is kind of never anymore. And then he goes, <laughs> then he goes, uh, uh, freedom friends, uh, Rogan, uh, and he, and he starts naming it off and I start laughing and he's like, I was like, you know, you know that I'm, I'm Mikey from freedom friends. And he's like, fuck you. <laughs> And I was like, I know. And he's like, and he's like, bullshit. And I go, in a world for friends. He goes, motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude, I have a day job. I was like, you obviously haven't been listening that much because we talk about me working for Hero Sports all the fucking time now. <laughs> but uh, so shout out there, Michael, when you finally get around to listen to this episode. That actually, that happened on Saturday uh, at my, at my spot. Yeah. There were some guys in there talking and, uh, Somebody asked if I could if I could get together for a game on Monday night. And I was like, I can't. I got to go record my podcast. I'm like, oh, you do a podcast? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, all I do is listen to podcasts at work. And I was like, what do you listen to? And they brought up the Freedom Friends. And I was like, really? And they're like, yeah, I fucking love that show. And I was like, why? How, <laughs> That's what I how, asked much, do you, how much do you listen to it? And they were like, oh, every time it comes out, I've got a subscription on it. And I was like, do you know the cast names? He's like, yeah, it's John, Scott, and Mikey, and Jazz. And then he literally got this look on his face and he just looked at me. He's like, son of a bitch. And I was like, hey, it's like, not a lot of me running around. Yeah, you, know, you know what that means is people don't associate your look with your voice. Well, they're both horrible. So I don't like, I'm, well, yeah, I'm, you, your voice isn't that bad. It's pretty bad. Why do you think I don't listen to the show? <laughs> <laughs> but how many times have you done that? Listen to a podcast and then you like see the person on the podcast and you're like, or a musician. What? Yeah. You yeah. listen to the music and then you see them and you're like, no fucking yeah. way. Like, yeah. I, I do it a lot with like, like I listen to a lot of Rogan and like his guests, like the other day I'm, I'm thinking this guy is like old as fuck and has been around the block. He's talking to this guy. And then I, I pull up the, it like stopped and I had to redo it. And then the video came up on my phone and I'm like, this dude's like, 29 like yeah you know like it just the voice was way different than what i pictured in yeah. my head so i'm sure people get that a lot yeah there's a not for you you're timeless buddy well but that doesn't i mean <laughs> I it's like i have an employee that works for me and i found out his ex-wife uh her uncle is neil degrasse tyson no <laughs> oh, really so because he sent me a he sent me a Facebook friend request and there's no fucking way I'm going to be Facebook friends with my employee. That's just not going to happen. And, uh, me either, but, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, my wife accepted it. And so of course my wife being my wife went and tr- like fucking just went through his whole Facebook profile. And there's like all these pictures of him, like with Neil deGrasse Tyson. So she comes to me and she's like, what the fuck is this all about? And I was like, I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> It, he work, He's a minimum wage employee. How much of his personal life do you think I fucking dig into? It, just so everybody knows, Battle Pub page ass. It, like ass on <laughs> ass. Like, and he still makes more than I do. So <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> but uh, so I went next time I fucking saw him at the store. I was like, 
motherfucker. Like your ex uncle in law was Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was like, yeah. And I was like, what's he like? And he's like, that motherfucker can drink. And I was like, well, that's what I wanted to know. <laughs> Once like, you realize that everything in the world is doomed, all you're going to do is drink. I was like, <laughs> well, we, do, we do need more guests on the podcast. Well, then I was all salty. I was like, I couldn't have met you while you like still had ties. Like, is that have been a hell of a guess? I don't know, man. The last time he was on Rogan, all he did was just interrupt yeah. Rogan the whole fucking yeah. time and talk so, over him. And I was so like, "Well, that would be fun for our podcast." Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we talk <laughs> over we talk over each other enough, man. I mean, Holy it would be like fuck. you know, like, it would actually be great to have somebody like him on the show that likes to talk over other people that tried to talk over this show. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be like, "Oh, he'd be like the cosmos is yeah, but." What kind of cake? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not high enough to listen to that yet. So let's go back to the cake. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk about cake for about 45 more minutes so this edible kicks in, and then you can talk about the cosmos. Yeah. Deal? The biggest thing that actually <laughs> bugs me with him is, like you said, his second appearance on him and stuff. The no. last couple of years, he's gotten like super political. Yeah. So when he was doing Star Talk, and it was literally just fucking astrophysics. I loved it and saw this stuff. I listened. I listened to Star it Talk all was the an time. Amazing show, dude. And him that, and JB Smooth. Yep. And uh, who I actually met in L.A. And he's a fucking awesome dude. Um, super funny. Stand-up comedian. Yeah. But, um, but lately, he's just gotten super fucking political. And I'm just like, dude, can you just like, it's like be dude, the dude that uh, runs the Hayden Planetarium and you just like blow my mind with fucking science facts and like not yeah. chime in on fucking politics? Like, shouldn't science be above that? You'd think like, so. But. No, science and politics are the same today. I, I, oh god that made well, me throw up in my mouth a little bit you, you, you just gotta, said that you have to follow the science by listening to the politicians <laughs> i don't though but I that's don't. how that's how it so works speaking of this that's the opposite of science no <laughs> like, speaking of, not, you haven't been listening <laughs> speaking of this everybody cheers to fauci fucking retiring hey, hey, you, that that guy. Guy. you guys know how much his retirement is no, no, don't say over it. 300 grand fucking a year it's it. not enough john they could pay him three million to retire and i'd be cool with it Fuck that guy. Go away. Uh, so it was funny. You know how like Apple pop, uh, like you know Apple You're not News. Wrong. You know how like <laughs> Apple News will pop up like a fucking article, You're not wrong. like randomly on your phone, and it'll be like Apple suggests this fucking article. Yeah, Apple one hundred percent does not. Uh, one thing that's the one company I will give. You do not pay any attention to what the fuck I look at on the internet. Yeah. Because the articles that yeah. you recommend to me, there's no fucking no, way that you'd be oh, like, oh, he'd find this relevant. But there was fucking, they, they got had by a fake article because there was a parody article that put out that Jill Biden had appointed Jill Biden as uh, Fauci's successor. <laughs> and it came across on my Apple fucking news feed. And I was like, that's not fucking true. And I looked into it and sure as fuck, it was a bullshit. It was like, yeah. it wasn't like a, it was like a Babylon B or a, an onion yeah. article or some shit. And I was just like, fucking Apple got took man. Yeah, Straight got funny. trolled as fuck. And they, they sent it out. That Everybody goes to look show at this that, one. That goes to show that their algorithm is strong. Yeah. Do you think Fauci's not the internet is stronger? Yeah. yeah. Do you think Fauci's retiring so you can try to avoid? Yes. Uh, avoid being in when Republicans are in again. Yes. No, avoid his fuck ups. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Now he's going to be exactly out. You can't point at him. Yeah. What it'll be is all the fuck ups will come forward, and whoever they appoint as the new director will have to deal with it. Will have to deal with the fallout. I heard it was a lot harder to subpoena somebody who's not in a government position. Hundred percent. Well, yeah. So go fuck yourself. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's do? how, I don't well, know that's how it works. Now yeah. here's the only thing: I think federal is, subpoena. They still got to come. But <laughs> here's the deal, though: is no. now that they have set the precedent where you can apparently fucking. You can impeach a dude who's no longer in office. That's true. I mean, when when that can happen, and it and it happened, nobody's safe. It's very true. It's very true. I like so. I'm I'm not up and up on the Mar Lago raid yet. I, so I haven't. I, I obviously I know the surface of it that everybody knows, right? Sure. The whole like they went down there, they raided it, they took a bunch of documents, they released the documents, they redacted like ninety percent of yeah. the shit that came out or whatever. Yeah. So because they raided the what did he call it the office, the office of the forty fifth president or whatever. Like somebody yeah. can take that position afterwards. It's like you're the only one that can have that <laughs> title. Yeah. Like it's not like it's like yeah. well when I die somebody else can have this seat. It's like no motherfucker. Like you're well, like well I want to say like every president has that. Like, yeah, yeah, like sure. Bush 43 it, has that. He does. Like, and they get libraries and all that kind sure. of stuff. But 
I don't think Trump's going to have a fucking library. Oh, God, so I hope tells he does. Me that he's oh, not. I fucking hope he does. And I hope it's just full of like Archie comics or something. Like, it'd be <laughs> fucking awesome. That'll be, that'll be the Biden library, bro. <laughs> Fuck, no, it's coloring Mar- books. Marmaduke. Marmaduke <laughs> coloring <laughs> books. <laughs> but, Color like, by number. <laughs> I, I fucking hope he's got a library and it's just like the best of Larry Front and Archie comics. Like, that's yeah. just the whole fucking Biden's library. Biden's library is just a massive building with Archie a chair, was- a lamp. <laughs> 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 and audiobooks. <'cause> yeah. all- <laughs> <laughs> because Archie was all about pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking oh god. And uh, uh if you don't get that reference, you're not old enough to hang out with us. So- <laughs> <laughs> Such a good movie. Yeah. So it's a it's a movie reference to a movie called Chasing Amy. If you don't know it, go yep. fucking watch it. Um, <laughs> you, yeah, you. We're going. Get yeah, we're buying a we're fuck going ton across of Archie the street. Comics. We're going to buy a fuck ton of Archie books. And I'm going to show you that Archie, Archie is all, all about pussy. pussy. Yeah. One of the <laughs> best a, fucking lines yeah. ever made. Him God. and Jughead were fucking. Why do you think he wore that little crown? <laughs> <laughs> so fucking good. Anyways, out of all of that. He wanted though, to get them both on a three way. <laughs> <laughs> whether, whether you like him or not. Trump's response, that fucking shit that they put out, where he put out that redacted document that said the FBI missed one and everything's redacted and it just says make America great again. It's like four <laughs> words like spread out on the page. I was I, like, fuck, like him or not, that's a clap back for the ages. Like yeah. that is so fucking good. I saw a meme where it was all the redacted documents and it just said Trump and bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like I, I don't like I said, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure on what all but Part of you, part of me's got to be like, there's just a little bit of bullshit. Like, there's a little bit of fuckery foot. Like, it's clearly a political it's, fucking it's takedown. Election, election the, season. The, the, like, they've the, been talking the whole time. It's not like he was hiding dude, shit. We're getting ready to the go. The thing is, it's election season, if, and then we're getting ready to go into the fucking runoff. If yeah. he did something that warranted it, and he deserves to get in trouble for it, then, then do it. Then get him in trouble. Yeah. I'm down. But Absolutely. fucking, but if not, like, that needs to come out too. Like, yeah. it, you know, God, but, it, but, it but that won't, but it won't, I know, that won't come has. out. Yeah. Like that, 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 that's, that's the, the only problem. thing that I will give him is that like Trump's done his thing, but he's done his thing. And like, regardless of all the shit that happens, there's not a whole lot of the whole, like, well, now I'm going to do this. Like he doesn't actually like get all petty. He's just like, yep, you missed. And then like, he just drives on and does his fucking thing. And it's yeah, like, well, God damn it. Like, the, the worst is a billionaire. The worst talk about a guy that just has no fucks left. The, like, wor- the worst part about the whole Mar-a-Lago raid is it probably if he gets reelected is the reason he got reelected. Well, and that fake redacted document that they stuck yeah. out, it literally had that. And then it, at the top, it had the new thing and it said Trump and it said, save America. It was like the new fucking campaign slogan at yeah. the top. So you, you know what he's I, coming back. You know I, saw, I saw a great T-shirt today. It said F Biden, but the FBI part was in one color and the rest of Biden was in another <laughs> color color. So it was just FBI Biden, like F Biden. It so was it was like, that's awesome. F Biden. Yeah. Nice. But, it, but it's like he owns, owns the FBI sure. or. Yeah. Or, or F. Well, and that's the problem, though, right? Is that he used because if it comes out that there, let's say it comes out and that there's that there was nothing that the former president did wrong th- at Mar-a-Lago, right? If they don't fucking come out and tell and say that, yeah, it's blatantly obvious, yeah, that the president utilized his power of the office against a political opponent for an attempted spear well, campaign. The weird thing is and that that's at this point, it it's not even a political opponent. Because <laughs> there's been no the declaration of office. Right. That was done in the past. Yeah. When well, he it was. was Hello, Russian vice collusion. No, when they were like, fucking tapped his hotel room. Yeah. They tapped his hotel room, the Russian collusion fucking bullshit, the, do- the steel dossier, all that shit that yeah. was fucking proven could be 100% fucking false. You know, all my liberal friends' ears are bleeding right now. They're like, no, Trump's bad. Doesn't matter, man. They still but fucking it, lie but about it. Using your office right? to like, abuse that, yeah, in order to try and do it. now that, that level of fucking ethics is rest, not okay. But in when the they presidency. when they triggered that last investigation, the FBI did come out and was like, "We have absolutely no evidence that there was any sort of clue." Like after yeah. reviewing well, everything, we af- have nothing. After he was out of office and there was no more damage that could be done. Yeah, like, after, oh, after the yeah. Re- okay. after the election cycle was but, over. Uh, let's face it. When have we ever seen anything done by the government that was done at speed? It's yeah, not about speed, it's, it's about timing. Timing. Yeah. Yes. It, I will give you re- stuff gets released in timing. Like right? You mean to but, tell me no time in the last two <laughs> years they haven't been like, hey, you still got those papers? 
<laughs> in two years, they oh, haven't I get been it. like. I, I, I'm with you. I'm just you saying, know, like the 18 months for the FBI to determine that something wasn't. Yeah, no, I that fucking tracks. Like whether it was against the president yeah. or against somebody else or whatever, I guarantee you nothing happens faster than that. Like it's just that we're we're talking about the U.S. government. We're as fucked up as we are when we're still the best there is, and we're we're beyond fucked. And we're still the best there is. And we're still just slow as shit. I stand by my thoughts on this. If, if the government, I hope that the government is actively trying to be bad. Just pairs really well. <laughs> like I'm really like I hope, this. I hope the government's <laughs> trying to be bad and they're like doing stuff for like a big conspiracy type of fucking purpose because if they're not then the government's just incompetent and i would rather the government not be incompetent and so here's the scary part my friend and i agree with you i really hope that this is some giant cover-up because at least then i can go like yeah oh Oh, they did their job okay my tax dollars at work you were trying to cover something else up like oh there's actually mole people in the center of the earth or like something like hit me with anything other than Oh my God, we're just incompetent. Yeah. If yeah. we're not right? corrupt and we're just incompetent, I'm very disappointed. Here's why. Who would you rather have? Inc- you'd rather have corrupt why, than incompetent? I think so. Here's why you and I are both <laughs> I about. Think so. At least they're <laughs> smart. Here's why I think yeah. both and I are about to pour another drink, which I actually do. Could you give oh, yeah. me some ice, my friend? I'll take ice too. Uh, I think we're both about to pour another there you drink. Go, Mikey, while you're over there. When Bernie Sanders stands in front <laughs> of the entire government and goes, only 13% of the U.S. thinks we know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. We have a serious issue. No, and- when Bernie Sanders, the king of make government as big as humanly possible, is going, we have completely lost the American population. <laughs> Nobody thinks we know what the fuck we're doing. So when that I, guy- I, and I don't think I don't think it's at 13%. 13% think they know what they're doing. 70%. I don't think that they think that they don't know what they're doing. I think they think that they're purposely But that's what he said. being corrupt. But he also, literally said but, yeah. everybody yeah. believes that we are either incompetent or are against the people. Yeah. So so Bernie basically what he did was he uh he referenced a Gallup poll that said um that 13% of the American population trusts the government. He goes and that means there is an astounding number. An astounding number because Gala polls do not reach everybody. I've never been yeah. a part of one. Yeah. What's well, so say? Those numbers are skewed because yeah. it's thirteen percent of people that answer a poll. Yeah, which <laughs> yeah. if somebody normally, calls me, is like, "Hey, do you want to fuck off?" Click. Yeah, you know what I mean. But oh, here's but the deal: less, one do you know, less. <laughs> that's like, but that's like Yelp reviews. Yeah, most Yelp reviews are negative because the only time you're actually going to leave a review is when you're mad. Yeah. Nah, I leave great reviews. Do so you? I've been very lucky, like with my place. I haven't gotten any negative reviews. Yeah. The only reviews that we've gotten are people that like, they loved hanging out. And how, so they how, took the time many, to give a positive review. How many, how many Yelp reviews do you have? Luckily, I am not fucking on Yelp. Okay. How many Google I'll, reviews? I'll do you have? Oh, I don't know. Between the, between Facebook and Google and not, All right. I don't know. A hundred. I, ch- I challenge our listeners. A hundred total. I challenge our listeners. Google review Battle Pub. And Google review Warfighter Tobacco. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. So Jazz, the Battle Pub is currently at nineteen. Nineteen Google reviews. Google reviews, and then I don't know what it is on Facebook. It's probably what you got Warfighter one has. four star, and the rest of them are five stars. Yeah, and the four star was because you weren't just a naked. No, the hot four stars from this guy there. named I know I know who left the four star, <laughs> and it's actually a really positive review. He just didn't give us five stars I know, for it's some just reason. Weird. He's, just, like, he's, just, he's just a hard 16. reviewer. 16? We 16. only have 16 reviews. 16 yeah. reviews. Your four star your, oh, your, four, your four star, how star many, one says how many? big gaming venue, lots of tables, as yeah. well as merchandise. The four star is like actually a really good review, but yeah. it only gave me four stars for some fucking reason. But fuck them. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm totally guilty. I have not reviewed Warfighter Tobacco. I have like, either. Have I. Do, <laughs> do us a favor though. If that's, you listen. Like, that's like fucking jerking off to your own fucking selfie, man. Like, come on. Like, I mean, like, you, don't you've never do done that? that? <laughs> What's wrong with you, bro? The definition of narcissism, ladies and gents. <laughs> You've never masturbated in the mirror? You just don't stand there staring at yourself? I did I once. I totally know. You've masturbated in the mirror. Only to realize that no. you do weird things with your hands that you don't realize you do. 
I wasn't really looking at my hands. <laughs> John's all about that cock. Dude, no. It would we have all recreated the American psycho scene. Like it's I'm sorry, but you have. Like you've well, never seen well, that movie. Well, well, fucking, yeah. I've definitely done the what's up. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yeah. See? I've definitely done that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the same thing. I mean, that's why they put mirrors in hotel rooms. That's a Fuck. masturbatory act. <laughs> that's a masturbatory act. If you're getting more turned on by watching yourself perform a sexual act. That's masturbatory act. Sure. And narcissism. <laughs> and narcissism. Yeah, and I totally know one person that would have done this. Yes. Yeah, our favorite felon is actually sitting right over there. <laughs> yeah. <what> fucking- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely jerks off to himself. <laughs> he, the way he came. Right before he came here, he was yeah. in his fucking truck with the rear view mirror just down. fucking making eye contact. He's, up, he's over there like, the Coast Guard is a branch. God damn it, the Coast Guard's a branch. <laughs> <laughs> I like fucking myself because I like bad boys. <laughs> Why do you think only his right arm is tattooed, not his left? Yeah. <laughs> the first to himself God is damn Rico. It, Popeye, calm down. <laughs> F- full disclosure, if you ever come watch a Freedom Friends episode, nobody is fucking safe. Yep. <laughs> I don't give yep. a fuck who you are. If your taste is bad enough that you're coming to hang out with us, yeah, that's your I fault. assumed you volunteered. You signed the waiver. Did yeah. you pass me something from that end of the bar? Uh, what would you like? I, it surprised me, my friend. Well, here, you haven't had this yet. It, or ha- not tonight, tonight. but yeah. I, yeah. yeah. So, Pairing very well with the 762 uh, field. I want to I wanna shout out uh, the generosity of Scott. So I stopped by a cigar shop yesterday. Under the recommendation of the Warfighter Boys. It's Specifically, a great cigar shop. It's really good. I no, liked I, it a lot. I like those guys. It's called 4-9 Cigars yeah. here in San Antonio, and it's veteran-owned. It's two vets that opened it. The name comes from their combined yeah, it's at, service years. Well, it's two owners, and Laron, the manager, is also a vet. Yeah, so I met EB, yeah. uh, who was one of the owners. So he did 21 years in the Corps, uh, and he did the whole Mustang thing. So he was enlisted and then... One officer later. Oh, and then, I thought he bought one at like 30% interest. It, <laughs> <laughs> he was enlisted. That's, so the, that's, that's the other exactly. Mustang thing. Oh, got it. Uh, and then the other guy did 20. He wanted up financing. <laughs> yeah. And then the other guy did 20. Everything must years. go. Yeah. So that's where they get the four nine. And then their, their manager is also. A, he a was guy. a command. He was a command sergeant major. So, and he's the manager. So he does all the work. I call him a command specialist and he appreciates that. Nice. So, so, uh, so I stopped by under the recommendation. Call of, him a Lance Gunny. Scott. Because we've shot the we we've shouted their shop out on the show before. Yeah, after it's a, you had stopped by the shop, first yeah. time, and so I stopped in and said hi, and uh, we were trying to kill some time before we went to go pick up uh, the puppy, and uh, so I bought some cigars. We had like an hour and a half to kill. Uh, very nice lounge. It's well ventilated, really comfy, um, and it was a cigar shop before them, and they flipped it. Yeah. So now the lounge is the priority, and the humidor is up front, whereas no. beforehand it was. What is now his lounge yeah. used to be the walk-in humidor yeah. and it was not designed to hang out in. It no, was, it had like two tables. It was get your shit and yeah. get the fuck out. Yeah. Like, By the way, that's, they're located at 22806 US 281 in San Antonio. Check them out. Yeah, so if you're yeah. up there near TPC Parkway, that big, huge shopping center that's at TPC Parkway, uh, they're inside there. Weirdly so, enough, and this is a weird thing to say, mm-hmm. that's where my favorite Chick-fil-A is. It's a good Chick Fil A. The one that's Chick-fil-A on the other side ne- of the highway, in front of the H E B. Never done me wrong. It's so good. It's so yeah. good. <laughs> what, okay, tell me a Chick Fil A that has done you wrong. Oh, three double nines done me dirty. Let me also say the three double nine Chick Fil A is trash. Me, they've done yeah. me dirty. Is Don't it, get me wrong. It's trash still better than it, still better than any other fucking place, but has done me dirty because you had to wait a long time. No, no, the food no, quality. The, the oh. wait, okay, but like the like I've gotten like raw food. I've had like whoever that I've owner had is fuck too. Up my order. Whoever that owner is too is like all about just letting it sit in the warmer tray. So like you'll get your shit, uh, and you can tell it's just been sitting forever. Yeah, like I think they batch fucking sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. So that's why anyways, I, that's why I always order it with cheese, dog. So I uh, I stopped <laughs> so in the shop. Like your shit microwaved. And uh, <laughs> EB, like yeah. any good owner, he said, "This is your first time in," and I said, "Yeah." And he's like, "How'd you hear about us?" And I was like. Well, two of my really good friends, uh, John and Scott, own Warfighter Tobacco, and uh, they were talking about how great the shop is. I was on this side of town. I don't get over here very often anymore because I moved. I used to live a mile and a half yeah. from that fucking store, and now I I don't. So yeah. I was like, but since we're over here, I wanted to stop in and check it out. And da, 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 da. So bought a couple cigars. I'm sitting in the lounge, and he comes in and goes, hey, do you want a drink? 
And I was like, yeah, I'll take a water or whatever. And he's like, no, do you want like a real drink? And I was like, well, I know you said it's BYOB, but I didn't bring anything. And he's like, no, it's cool. Scott left a bottle of Diplomatico rum <laughs> in yeah. the back. And do you want a drink? And I was like, oh, if it's Scott shit, then yeah, 100% I'll take the drink. <laughs> so, so I, go ahead. Jazz shoots me a text. He's like, thanks for the drink. And well, he sent it to all of us. And I I'm like, the whole and I'm like, friends group. And I'm like, what the fuck is he talking it, about? It took me a minute to re- to realize where he was. And, and I'm, I'm sitting like, there thinking, oh, I get it. And I, was <laughs> like, I knew right where you were. Yeah, I, I knew you'd get it right away. Well, so like, I was like, hey, Scott, I appreciate the drink. So I had no idea. Scott, without missing a beat, it just put like you're very welcome buddy yeah. like it wasn't even like oh you better fucking replace it whatever it was just so like, like glad you had one like, i had no idea and for some, my head went to because i know your anniversary is around this time uh, um it's nine nine because i'm uh lazy and it was nine nine nineteen it made it very easy to remember when the fuck got i got married, married. 19 19 yeah it's, that it's been that it's long been that long dude but and, and you and i had just talked about uh caitlin's oh. anniversary gift that you were getting her We've, Which I couldn't. It, yeah, it, she's too Snoopy. Yeah. So like, I already gave it to her. Yeah, but we were talking about it. So I was sitting yeah. there thinking. I was and I was fucking racking my brain. I'm like, are they out celebrating? Did like Scott Venmo him money for a drink or something? What the fuck, man? So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, is somebody taking my best friend? Uh, like, <laughs> well, well, That's my job. Well, I was like, I was like, well, fuck. I want to send him money for a drink too. Shit. And then I was like, wait a minute. You got married in fucking September. Yeah. I was like. It's not even there yet. No. <laughs> I was like, that's not right. So no, I did buy a gift. But the reason I bought that early was there was only one left that I could get. And the the people that sell it told me it was going to be like three months or something before they could get another one in. The dogs? No, no I, his, I, oh, I got the, her a, the gift for the gift for the anniversary. And they told me it's going to be like three months before they could get. I'll give you one. a hint. It's sparkly and it comes in a nice blue box. Yeah. Oh, Ah. A grill. <laughs> you got her grill. I got her grill. <laughs> no, uh, oh, fuck it. I'll flex. I don't give a fuck. I bought my wife Tiffany for our anniversary. Yeah. I bought her uh, jewelry from <laughs> Tiffany and Company. Tiffany so. fucking cufflinks. And what he, what he <laughs> told me, what he told me, I was like, well, nothing says I'm looking at your butthole later like this little blue box. And he's like, you're yeah. goddamn right. <laughs> <laughs> this is when it comes down to timing, though. Because, like, there was no way for me to fucking hide it. Right. Right. And she found out I was out running errands because my employee that was handling the shop during the day texted her and was like, Hey, I have this question. And she was like, why didn't she just just jazz? And he goes, well, he's not here. And I was like, motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) So I had it and whatever, and she's too Snoopy. So I gave it to her early, but uh, this one comes down to timing. If you're going to give somebody Tiffany as a gift, don't do it when they're on their period. Yes. Because it, um, it, you accomplish it, it negates the gift. Yeah, you accomplish yeah. nothing. Yeah, so. if you fucking. <laughs> but because uh, I tried the whole like, just because the water slide's broken doesn't mean the log ride ain't working. <laughs> and like that didn't fly. No. So yeah, no. but uh, but I'm taking her to dinner on the anniversary and stuff. Anyways, nice. Nice. But no, she's like, no, great. No, I have to get you something. That's the same thing. I was like, no, you don't. No, you don't. And I'm telling you right now, don't, if you go, don't. if you try and match me for the fact that I bought Tiffany and you're going to try and go get me a gift, I'm just going to be mad. Like, yeah, I'm not right? yeah. like, don't you I, fucking I, I'm dare. not going to be like, oh, this was really nice. I'm just going to be upset. Yeah. Guys like, don't work that way. Yeah. I was yeah. like, don't, don't try and go like toe to toe with this. Like, I will say this. Your wife gives thoughtful gifts. She does. She's, she's an squared away. Extremely yeah. thoughtful gift giver. Uh, like, like she, when she did the, the, the Funko pop of me, like she hand it was a fucking gift. made yeah, that. It was handmade. It's one of my favorite things. I it's fucking still love your that Facebook thing. profile. It is. is that pop pop <laughs> it is. Yeah. No, me hanging off the fucking plane skydiving replaced it. But that's, Finally, yeah. but that's because, but it was like two years. Yeah. Of I really like yeah. that. <laughs> I really like it. Like she did a good job on it. Too. She it did does a great like job. It. Like it, she, and I fucking really enjoyed that gift. And I was like, fucking, watching her try and it was sculpt. awful. Watching her try and sculpt cargo shorts was one of the most hilarious things on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> but she nailed it. <laughs> she did it. They yeah. even looked like they were like my, my proper wrinkles and everything, yeah. man. It was good. Like, I don't even have one of those. Yeah. Like so, it was a thoughtful fucking yeah, present, right? It. Like she's so. she's a thoughtful gift giver. Um, I try to be. I try to be as thoughtful as I can. Yeah. But I just like, told her to hug me with her mouth and we're good to go. Right? I'm just a piece of shit. So. But, we, but we, we're all but like this. But you're a this. lovable like, piece of shit. Yeah, we, you, we've Jess. all been there. And we've talked about this before <laughs> where it's like, like, I don't need a fucking day to get somebody a gift. I don't, nah, I don't, it doesn't I have to be a Christmas gift. If I something that speaks to me about gift, it, then right? like, here you go. Yeah. It, a lot of times it just coincides because sales. The one that actually. <laughs> you know what I mean? The sales one that, coincide uh, with fucking Out of our friend group, the one that pisses me off is John. I know. 
And here's why it pisses me off is John will go like, saw this thing and I really like it. And I'm like, fucking no, I got something. Oh, he he buys that shit for himself. Fucking three days later, he's like, so that thing I was talking about just showed up in the mail. I'm like, motherfucker. (laughs) God damn it. That's why I just buy you spontaneous shit. It is not that I don't think about you. It's just that like, it it turns into that whole like, what do you buy the guy that just buys all of his own fucking shit? Dave and I were talking about that with Scott. And it was funny because it was like, Dave's like, I think I know what I want to get Scott. And then like the next week, Scott shows up and there's no talk about anything. It was just Scott happened to see it and fucking boom, there it was. He's like, oh, look at this cool new thing. Dave's like, fuck. (laughs) That's why when Scott was like, I'm thinking about getting into pipe smoking or whatever. And I was like, don't buy shit. Don't buy shit. There's a tradition to this. Don't do fuck all. I got this. Well, it, it took me a little longer and, and than I wanted Dave's to. Dave's another thoughtful gift it. giver. You did. Yeah, he is. Because like, like Justin, like you. Dave has set a fucking, bar yeah. that is it's, unapproachable. It's like, I don't yeah. like how high bar uh, so Dave has set Dave's the goddamn not, Dave's bar. Dave's not here, and I'm not sure if he's going to listen to this or not, but I'll throw Dave under the bus real quick. There are already Christmas gifts showing up at the fucking house. Fucking Dave. Yeah. For fucking Christmas. Yeah. It is August. He's proactive, man. It, because Dude. he's just like, oh, yeah, this is it. Last just, Christmas, Dave yeah, got me say a, fucking word. a piece of wall art. Me too. Yeah, it's He's done two art pieces for me. So one was schematics for all of the vehicles, yep. all of the fighter vehicles for Star Wars. And then the next one was this huge wall poster that was the entire flight pattern for the Apollo missions. And I was like, God damn it, Dave. It like yeah. D- Dave got me this super awesome jerky making kit because I was going on the elk hunt last year. Yep. And I came back with nothing, and I blamed it on him. And I'm like, it's your fucking, it's your fault, asshole. <laughs> like, if you were giving me this after, I probably would have came home with some meat. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, he got he got me a, uh, like, like he'd framed a picture of, like, me, him, Jason Murph, who's been on the show, and uh, my buddy uh, uh, Nick Holcomb, uh, who I contracted with down at RCBT, and all those guys, like, and my buddy uh, John Longendorf, all those guys, like, together. He actually called me about that. Yeah, he framed it. I did it. not know you contracted with Holcomb. Yeah, I didn't know that. So yeah. that picture, he actually called me about it. Me and him were roommates at CRC and Bliss, and we instantly became friends when he comes walking out wearing mantis. He had purple mantis on, and I was like, <laughs> huh. I was like, hey, girl, bring that ass over here. Know this guy five minutes. <laughs> and he looks at me, and I move the fucking thing, and I'm laying there in silkies, and he's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dave called me about that picture, and he's like, this is what I'm thinking about, too. Do you think Mikey would like it? And I was like, yeah, Mikey buys his own toys. So you don't need to get him something I'm, cool. I'm as bad as you are. Yeah. Like, like Mikey buys his own toys, but that kind of stuff, stuff that's it's once in a lifetime memories and you have access to that and it's going to turn it into something more than a Facebook yeah. post. That's what's going to last. Like and that's, I see it every day. That it's matters more. That matters more than like, hey, I bought you this random fucking thing. Yeah. Like Mikey buys his own toys. Like it's you don't don't try and do that. So like, if, you, if you guys are shopping for me, I wear a size uh, 2011 Harley Touring, <laughs> full Fox suspension, <laughs> right? Full Fox suspension. <laughs> it's like twenty five hundred bucks. The match painted bags. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't care about looks. I don't give a shit about looks. I don't. Have you seen? Um, shout but, out to Kibby because we haven't talked about him in a while. It fucking still love. You, I was buddy. on the phone with him the other day. Yeah, I talked to him a couple days ago. Yeah, um, yeah he buddy checks pretty. He's regular. coming down October. Yep, he'll yeah. be down here. Uh, have you seen Kibby's bike? Have you seen pictures of Kibby's yeah. bike? Fuck, that thing is pretty. Yeah, he's got uh, warfighter emblems on the back. It's on the back. Yeah, but have you seen like the, the like just stanced yeah, yeah, out? Yeah. Ver- yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Yeah, it looks so, really good. La- like, last weekend, I went out to Arizona for uh, a friend of mine's funeral. Um, but I ended up bringing my motorcycle out there. You had uh, to. Because I had to. Was it from the club? Yeah. Oh. And uh, really shitty situation how it all went down. He was just trying to be a good dude and help help out somebody that was having it's a fucking tragic story man what yeah. they thought was a medical emergency when it really was the guy was fucking huffing cans and uh oh no yeah it was bad but anyways um so i'm out there for that and end up riding because you know they do a lot of memorial rides ride to the crash site and then you know a couple fun rides just to let everybody blow off some steam um so two parts of the, the fun ride we did we rode down to tortilla flats uh which is um a little tiny tiny like one building town by Canyon Lake um, and east of Phoenix in Arizona. Yep. Um, I always got Tortilla Flats and Tombstone mixed up. Oh, no. Big difference. No, I know. I know. Yep. But that's in yeah, my yeah. head. Yeah. They yeah. look similar. If yeah. you took like a half a block of Tombstone, that's Tortilla Flats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. three building, one it's, building. It's teeny teeny. Yep. But so going down there, they, they just repaved that road going by Canyon Lake a couple of years ago. So it was all nice and pretty where it used to be just filled with potholes and horrible to ride. And uh, so like, yeah, we're going to ride Tortilla Flats in the morning. And I'm like, uh, you sure? And they're like, yeah, they repaved it. I'm like, I'm fucking in. Is this when you broke the trailer? 
No, bra- I broke the trailer on the way out there. My oh, okay. back tire, my motorcycle fell through the dry rot floor. Damn. And luckily, my frame of my bike sat on the subframe of the trailer, and my tire missed the pavement for I don't even know how many hundreds of miles. Oh my god! By a couple inches. Damn. Because I filled up a gas, and I get about five hundred miles to a tank. I filled up a gas, and I drove five hundred fucking miles, and I stopped in Lordsburg, New Mexico, and I opened the trailer like I fucking start pumping the fucking filling the truck up. I open the trailer, and I'm like, "Ooh, bike's still up. Fuck yeah!" For some reason, I look down, and I look down, and uh, like the whole bike was sunk and so i opened the whole thing all the way up and the back tire is buried up to the fucking swing arm jesus through the fucking there's a hole i don't know fucking 14 18 inches in the bottom of the trailer so you there's no rolling it out of that right so i'm climbing in this trailer that's only four feet tall trying to pick up half of my thousand pound bike out of this fucking <laughs> hole to put it to the side luckily for some random fucking reason when i when I loaded my bike and I strapped it all down, I grabbed if a couple. If only you had tube. a weight rack in here where you could have been practicing all of this. I, well, that's the only reason. That's why I think I could do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just because I look at that weight rack every day and it makes me strong. Yeah, I don't use it. He gets str- he gets strong by osmosis. <laughs> but so I loaded my bike up and I'm like, like I grabbed two random two by fours out of my garage and I'm like, I might need these and I threw them in the trailer, fucking shut it up and go down the road. Thank fucking god, because that's the only reason I made it there because I yeah. I put a two by four across the gap. And then put the bike back on the two by four, strapped it all back down, made it the next three and a half hours. Um, but uh, but no, so going into uh, leaving Phoenix, going into Tortilla Flats, going down, and it's like all a bunch of like hairpin turns. It is awesome to ride. Um, not if you ride like me. It's fucking terrifying. So the fun thing was, is I haven't ridden like that in a long time. I need long and smooth, so we, straight roads. We man. had five cruisers, five full dresser Harleys, and one sport bike. <clears throat> And the dude on the sport bike can ride. And a couple of the guys in the Harleys can ride because we all used to have sport bikes. And then there's a couple of guys I didn't know. But as soon as we're like, we were like, once we hit this point, like, and everybody knew it's like, it's, it's a long swooping left turn. And then it goes into really tight turns after that. Once we hit that long swooping left turn, everyone's free. Like, don't stay in formation anymore. Just go have fun. Like, if you don't want to smash and ride hard, like, hang in the back. If you want to try to keep up the sport bike, fucking hey, good luck. Hey, yeah, I'd be in the very and, back. Uh, so I was like, I'm just going to stay in the middle. Well, I, I I guess I have a little bit of a competitive nature, and I didn't want to <laughs> stay in the middle anymore. <laughs> so it was a sport bike, my buddy Frank, me, and then uh, one of the other guys that I've known, I don't know, 10, 12 years now. That he, he doesn't ride. He's not part of the club, but he's just been around. He's ridden with us a bunch. Uh, he also used to be on a sport bike. He's got a full dresser, too, Harley. And uh, so the dude on the sport bike's fucking, you know, hauling ass. And my buddy Frank up there, and he's fucking right. You know, he rides every fucking day. And I don't ride that much anymore. So I'm like, okay, like, this is fun. I'm I'm half learning and half remembering that I, I know how to do this. And uh, so we we made it all the way down. And once you get to see the lake, there's like a hairpin blind right-hand turn. And there's a big rock structure on this side. And uh, so the sport bike fucking dives into it. My buddy Frank dives into it. And I'm like, fuck, sweet. Here we go. I dove late. Right. So I hit the apex a little bit late and I'm already starting to drift to the outside of the lane. And I'm like, ah, I'm like, I still got this. Like, everything's totally fine. Here comes a truck with a boat behind it. Oh, no. And I'm like, whoo. I'm like, that was fucking close. Here comes another truck with an empty trailer, except the back, the tires from that empty trailer are about a foot on my side of the yellow line as I'm drifting out to the yellow line. And I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. I'm already dragging floorboard. So I just start to lean into it. And I'm like, here we go. Fucking touch my chin to my shoulder. It fucking push pull and just. That's it. And pray. And that's all I did. Well, the bracket that holds my floorboard that's fixed mounted, hard mounted to my frame, hit the ground. When that, when anything that's fixed mounted to the frame hits the ground, it lifts tires. Yeah. And if you lift your tire off the you ground. If you tire, you stop turning. Yeah. So I lean and I'm dragging the floorboard and all of a sudden I feel crook and, and I was like, oh, fuck. And I just start leaning, going out, out, out. <laughs> and right at the last second, I ground down enough metal that it, my back tire caught again and I went whoop and I fucking turned and I missed this trailer by like six inches. Jesus. So we get all the way down to the bottom and I'm like, boys, I'm like, so I that just, could have been the story of John Simons. I was yeah. like, I just had a fucking moment. And the dude that was behind me goes, yeah, you fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, the only thing that I thought is, well, at least his bike's going to hit the trailer first. So he's probably not going to die. <laughs> and I'm like, thanks, man. <laughs> I just saw a, a I think we've talked about it on the show before. Like, I love motorcycles. I don't know how to ride one. Right. But I love them. And I just saw a video that came across uh, one of my social media feeds. And it was this cop that had his whole, like, that huge dresser that yeah. the fucking cops ride. Right? Sitting on 
the crash bars. Yeah. Like it was sideways. And he's on it. And he's like, as you can see, like my body weight's not tipping this bike the rest of the way over. Like it's, yeah. and he was like feet on it the whole nine yards. And he's like, if you ever find yourself in this situation, I guess he had pulled these bikers over and essentially was like, I'm not going to give you a ticket if you let me talk to you about my fucking sweet ass motorcycle. So, and he was like, if you ever find yourself in this situation, what you need to do is actually throttle on and the, the bike will actually correct itself and pick itself yeah. back up. And I'm watching it going like, you know what? For somebody that spends literally his entire working career and everything on a motorcycle and this shit happens, that is probably fantastic advice. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you probably know like just how much you should kind of like goose it to kick it back around and all that kind of stuff. But you're talking to like two people that are probably like mostly trailer Queens and like weekend riders and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know if telling these people like all you have to do is just fucking roll the throttle so, or it'll stand itself back up. The, the, it the, might, <laughs> but it may be like you're falling on, left, you goose it and it, it fucking it stands up and now you're just bikes. hard right and shit. Like, only works on certain bikes at certain speeds. Um, yeah. See, he didn't say any of that. Yeah. So certain bikes, certain <laughs> speeds. So like sport bikes, but if they're set up to do stunts and they have a crash cage on the sides and everything like that, yeah. you can lay them down and then give them gas and centrifugal force will catch the tires and kind of stand them back up. Yeah. Same Speaking thing with which, the Harley full dresser. You but, guys said you would teach me how to ride a bike, but you wouldn't teach me in your old place because you had gravel. Mm -hmm. But now you have a parking lot. Yeah. And we have a little bit of a safe street. Does no. that We offer, don't need anything bigger than back there. Does yeah. that offer still stand? Sure. Yeah. Then I want to learn how to fucking ride a motorcycle. Okay. All right. Okay. Because God damn it. Um, I can I can teach I can teach the basics. I'd go to him for the fucking the, 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 the thing about riding I love you, Mikey, but uh I got an M on my license too, man. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I've known a lot of motherfuckers that M on their licenses that now have gravestones. So that, the, yeah. the thing I, about riding absolutely. a bike is if you do it enough, you every bike has its own feel. And you just have to have a hundred percent. It's it's like you have a founder like of his anything. own circle jerk sitting right there. <laughs> Jesus. There's a founder of his own fucking biker circle jerk sitting right there, too. Mikey. So, that's, oh, you ground the fuck out of yeah, that dude. thing, bro. On general principle, Ooh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't take lessons from Fallon's. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Unless, so, it's like, unless it's like, hey, here's how you make a forged check what about, or something what, like that. What, then sure. Like, bro, how, what, to, how to what, stay safe in the shower. What about how to not start former the shower. Fallon's? Former, yeah, I don't know. Okay. So I mean, it's like still, saying you're a former pedophile. He still I don't did know. it. <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> so the, the second part about that canyon, the tortilla flats ride. I love you, buddy. Is uh, <laughs> we did these things, that, we call them neutral races. Yeah. Right. And so tortilla flats is nice because if you ride all the way down to tortilla flats, it's all the way, it's at a bottom. And then you ride up to the end of the road. Mm. And then if you turn around, it's all downhill back to the bottom. And then you ride up to get back out of the, out of the, the, the lake, the right. area. Right. So um, is the whole concept just like going to neutral on the so downhill. What we do like is we, there, there's a start, a definitive starting point. Like there's a couple of spots where like it kind of dips and goes back up and you have to get past that. And then it's all downhill from there until right at the end. And it goes up to a blind 90 degree right hand turn. And the whole goal is to, we'll get past that little first dip and it will all stop in a line. Everybody kills their bikes, puts it in neutral. You have no power, no anything. And, and you, you just say go, go and you just go really? right. And that's it. And, and the bike is off. It's not even idling. You have nothing. No lights. Oh, so no you just fucking kill anything. And, then, and you're just in neutral and you fucking and you go. And so you're just trying to push to try to get as much speed as you can up front. <laughs> and then like we're in, you know, I'm in a thousand pound fucking full bagger with the windscreen, and I'm like tucked behind it, right? <laughs> and so you just race. And I'm gonna say the sport bike guy probably won this one. No. No, he didn't. Well, well, he's not heavy enough. Yeah, no, I was just say you got to so, think about all the downhills. Yeah. But, but I, got, I got some funny stories about it. But uh, so the the key to it is you have to not touch your brakes. So yeah. you have to trust your tires and trust your trust your judgment entering and exiting corners because there's some fucking nasty turns going through there. But if you brake too hard, everyone's gonna fucking pass you, and you you don't have no way to gain yeah, speed yeah. besides going downhill and hoping gravity just helps out. Yeah. So. Uh, I didn't look at my top speed, but my buddy Frank's top speed was 96 miles oh an hour. Oh my God. Yeah. He texts Jesus. me. He's like, bro. <laughs> so we're going down, right? And so uh, it was at first, it was me and Frank out front. And then uh, DC was on the sport bike. Like he got traction really quick because uh, he took a first, the first turn really sharp. So he passed me. So he's in between me and Frank. 
And so then obviously gravity keeps up and I end up passing him and he's like, fuck you. You know, I don't go by and I'm like, Haha, I'm just laughing. Whatever. You're, you're all on electric bikes too. It's super quiet. <laughs> yeah, right? no, wait, this is literally just a bicycle race. It is. Right? Like, nobody's it's pedaling. It's just gravity. Race, so now yeah. here's the funny part, right? He gets immediately behind me and I'm like, this motherfucker is going to draft me. Off you. And it <laughs> is so true because he's coming, coming, coming. I'm looking in my mirrors and all of a sudden I can barely see him because I got a trunk and everything, you know, I can barely see him. And then here he is. Whoop, and he's like, right by me. I'm like, Fuck you! <laughs> and it's not like you can't hear him. Like you guys so can hear each other. They're noisy bikes, and you can yell and scream, yeah. and you're hearing all the shit talking. Yeah. But so we got all the way to the bottom. We start hitting that uphill, and Frank's fucking way up there. And uh, and so DC's in front of me, and as he starts to slow down, I'm heavier. And I get about 30 feet in front of him and he's screaming. And he's like, and he's like trying to kick and push. And I'm like, good luck, man. <laughs> I mean, essentially. That sounds fun. So I've, awesome. done a, I've done a, a couple of the, one of my favorite charities out there is the Bike MS stuff. Mm. So as a cyclist, I like the Bike MS program. And it typically it's like a three-day weekend. And uh, that's what my dad died of. I'm aware. Yeah. You've told me. Yeah. So MS I mean, is. I, mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't know him, but still. Yeah. MS is brutal. That is one yeah, of the most it's fucked up. fucking ruthless, yeah. just cutthroat diseases you can possibly get diagnosed Multiple with. Multiple sclerosis for it is you folks awful. out there. And, and the bike MS stuff, the, the money that we spend to go race in that stuff is, it's not really a race. It's just a big ride. But uh, all of it goes back into, because enough people volunteer and enough people donate and all that stuff that sure. it's not like the money goes into just putting the event on. It actually goes back into the program. But it's a lot of that kind of stuff. So I've done a couple of them. The best idea I ever had was doing bike MS on a single speed bike. So for those of you that don't know what that is, if you're on your average road bike, it has all the gears. So when you're climbing, you can go into a softer gear. It's easier to pedal. Sure. When it's flat, you can go into a very high gear. You get more speed. So I did a hundred miler on a single speed bike. Yeah. That's like doing it on like a BMX. It, it's it, it's a, <laughs> put your bike in the highest gear it can go. Yeah. And whether it's hills or no hills, you can't change gears. You're just pedaling through it. But that kind of thing that you're talking about, that all that drafting and figuring yeah. out where you on the pack and how yeah. to pick that kind of stuff up. But it's a different animal because you'll be two inches off the tire on the guy in front of you because you'll you'll almost all of those. You'll pick up like a four man. Yeah. And what it is is somebody will pull the whole pack. Yeah. So they're breaking all the wind. Yeah. Everybody else is and just And you're chilling. in the front just pedaling like crazy to keep the speed. And everybody behind you is on cruise control. Yeah. And then every couple of minutes you drop back to the rear and then the next person takes the point and all that kind of stuff. But it, it's stuff like that where you'll hit these downhills and everybody just starts tucking in. Oh, yeah. And you'll hit 35, 40 miles an hour on a bicycle. Now... That doesn't sound as fast as 96. The thing is, is that you're doing 40 miles an hour on a bike that weighs. Like the one I did yeah, was, a full, well, it was a full <laughs> carbon frame, carbon wheels, like the so whole like nine yards. 12 pounds. It was like 12 pounds. <laughs> 40 miles an hour like on a 12 pound like, frame. <laughs> is That's pretty fucking hairy. Yeah. yeah you don't yeah. Be, like you're just like, oh, God, this is how I die. Yeah, like, this yeah. is it. It's like 20 miles and, uh, an hour on a one wheel. So, yeah. So. <laughs> But those kind of runs and stuff like that, like all that kind of stuff where it's just it letting gravity control it. Oh, yeah. It all it comes all down to, skills. do you trust your tires? Like, do you know the condition of the tires that you chose for your bike? Do you trust the other riders around you yeah. right. that's going to be able to take this turn at this speed? Because it, those big rides, and I, I know I've, I've never run in a big pack on motorcycles and stuff like that. Which, by the way, if you ever see any of those big packs and there's that guy that's like stopping you from passing, they're not being a dick. It's a safety thing. Yeah, you got a hundred motherfuckers all right next to each other and you do one fucking thing. You didn't fuck up one dude. You're fucking up everybody in that ride. Yeah. Like yep. that's yep. that's one so, thing I got to give a big shout out. And I don't show even some know fucking, fucking respect when like it's a big not. pack. But and they'll wait and wave you around. They're waiting to tell everybody else, hey, there's a car that's going to come by. So like. Don't jump pack. Don't move. Like, don't whatever. Because if one of them fucks up, everybody goes down. So maybe give them five minutes. They're just communicating. They'll let you around. Like, just yeah. try not to kill 100 people because oh, I fucking need to get there. Leave five minutes earlier. You'll be fine. So, What's up, John? What were you saying? 
Well, a big shout out to the row captains for a uh, no, no, 100%. Kind of revolution. They, when we did, we rode to uh, the funeral home, we had, I don't know, 50, 60 bikes. Um, and it was one of the smoothest rides I ever did. Like, yeah. I mean, there's slinky effect, but that happens no matter what. Like, sure. it is what it is. But when it came to blocking traffic and on and off highways and crossing intersections and roads and everything like that, like it was. And phenomenal. that's why they're doing it. They're not doing it to be a dick. It's, it's, it's a safety fucking thing. Yeah, like it's so it that is. you don't kill yeah. somebody that you weren't intending to. Yeah. If you have a motorcycle and you want to test your skills, right? And you pack. think going to a track is a way to test your skills. Negative. They're smashing turns and doing all the stuff. Been on a freeway. No. <laughs> Go try to do a slow race in a parking lot. Yeah. 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 You have That's two lines. The only time I've dumped my bike has been under five miles yep. an hour. You, yeah. have, you have two lines. They paint two lines on, on the, on the, on the ground and they might be two feet apart. And it's whatever, 25, 30, 40, 50 feet, however long they want to make it. And the goal is to go the length of that, staying in between the lines without putting a foot down or stalling your bike in the slowest time possible. Not the fastest. <laughs> you know, yeah. it doesn't matter if you're the fastest. Nobody fucking cares. Oh, well, whatever. Cool. Can you beat a fucking a guy on a track? No. So you're not the fastest. Sure. Right. Can you go the slowest? Do you have enough control over That's your hard, motorcycle yeah. and yourself? Well, it's like figure eights. To, Imagine like doing a sobriety. More people put down like, shit it's, on it's figure eights. It's like a sobriety test with a thousand pounds. With a thousand pound <laughs> motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I remember when I was going through like the motorcycle training course. Uh, I went to Palomar College in uh, in uh, San Diego County. That's where I went through my course. Oh, that's, that's where you got your criminal justice degree. <laughs> no, that was UIW. <laughs> Thank you very much. My alma mater's different, you fucking no college heaven cunt. <laughs> and, um, hey, hey, I went to college. You went to film school. I resemble that, Mark. Uh, I guess so much college. <laughs> I got, it's I still a like UNC com- college. I got some community. You college actually went to a better belt. college than all of us. So. <laughs> fucking, um, no, so I, I went to Palomar College, and the reason I did it is because I couldn't do the one on base because I had a nine foot chopper. And there was no fucking way I was bringing that thing through the fucking course. No, MSF would have been like, no. Yeah, yeah right? No, like, no. it wasn't happening. So I went I went to the fucking Palomar College one because they had their own bikes. And I'm sitting there thinking, I'm going to get a little Buell Blast. Shout out, Justin. And uh, I didn't get one. Do you remember when Harley used to teach their course on those? Yeah. That's all you got. If yeah. you went to the Harley, the, the Rider's yeah. Edge, Fuck they yeah. put you on a Buell yeah. Blast. And that's what I was thinking. They're I was going to get to learn on. They really they are. Start with the best and then everything down <laughs> from there. First off, if it's going to be the best, you have to have one that runs. Yeah. Hey, hey. I never claimed I had the best. <laughs> so uh, they they put you all in a fucking in like a little formation, basically. And they're like, hey, uh, who's already got a bike? And those of us who already own a motorcycle raise our hands. And they're like, oh, what do you got? And people are like, oh, I got like, you know, a Ninja fucking 250 or, or I got like a fucking Jixxer 6 is the most common mm-hmm. one that most of them had and all this. And he comes to me and I'm like, I have a 06 Softail with an SNS 105 and <laughs> fucking raked out like 90 degrees, about a nine foot chopper. Yeah. And they're like, um, you're going to get the fucking Ninja 250. I was like, why? And they're like, because you're never going to ride a sport bike. So you're going to learn on one. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So they put me on like this fucking tiny little Ninja, which was hilarious to have my big ass like on a, a tiny little Ninja. Cycle. It looked fucking <laughs> funny, dude. Yeah. They looked hilarious. And I was just like, all right. So that's, that's what I did the course on. And I was thankful later because like, you know, the, the figure eight in the course is where like 90% of the people fucking eat shit yeah you know their their foot comes down or something yeah. happens like but i was on that little fucking ninja and i was just like weep 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 i was like oh okay this is easy. <laughs> i was like this is fucking this is chill and then later to be a smart ass in a parking lot on my chopper i tried that nope didn't work mm-hmm. no didn't work almost put it down yeah. didn't never went down I mean, I will eventually because that's two kinds of riders. The only time I either go down and it's catastrophic or I'm I'm pulling up to a red light and I put the wrong foot down. I got a question for you about going down. <laughs> oh, really? So, <laughs> <laughs> the podcast just changed. Direction. If somebody sits on your face, <laughs> yeah. do you still qualify as going down? Ooh, I think they went up. I think it's going up. Or did they go down on you? They, they went up on you. They, they sat did. down on you. Better question. Does it matter? Well, no, because I it, like I'm that whole glory, glory. <laughs> <whatever>. <laughs> 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 Full sin, I, but I got scuba certified for a reason. <laughs> it's not to go in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
like it's called breathing control. That's just it. Explosive breathing. You know, I'm just curious. I modify the snorkel. <laughs> hey, your your CPAP just goes in your nose, right? That's it. I just put it on. Perfect. It pumps air. <laughs> That's why one of the pillow pads, dog. That's why one of the nose pillows. Um, I sent Justin a t- uh, an Instagram reel that posed a question, and I'm curious about your guys's. Uh, response to this before that did you ever real question about going down on a motorcycle huh no he was <laughs> definitely not <laughs> no okay Just make <laughs> sure. what I understand. so here's my here's the deal and it 100 yeah i am absolutely poser status when it comes to motorcycles it's this weird <laughs> obsession with motorcycles but i don't know how to ride one yeah i've always wanted to know how to ride one and i want to own one yeah. but i don't want to buy one until i know how to ride one and i know what i, I like. really don't want to let you borrow one until you know how to ride one so we're at an impasse yeah, i know right <laughs> that's why i learned on a fucking well, the good thing is, is what was your first bike here I, j- mine yeah uh cbr 600 r okay so first you, street bike you I started, started, on, you started on a street that. bike what was your first i bike? had a yamaha r6 a street bike, street bike. Yeah, I had. See, I, my first I, one was a Suzuki Marauder 800. I okay. was a cruiser. I learned, but it was fucking bed sprayed. I almost, it had like fucking, uh, it had like Rhino line on I it. So if I put it down, it was like those. good. I almost great, bought dude. one because our platoon name was the Marauders. Dude, they're so much fun. Dave and had one. When I they saw it. the Marauders, and I'm like, that's fucking sweet. And then I saw that they were an 800, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. It was my starter. It was like my starter so bike. Man. When, when I bought my first bike. I was a senior in high school and I was begging my mom to let me buy a motorcycle. Like I wanted one so bad. So she talks to my uncles and my uncles are like, well, just make sure he gets one. that's a 600 or less. And so she tells me this one day and I'm like, like done. done. <laughs> so I got, a, I, got, I got an R6 that went one, ni- one eighty, <laughs> one ninety, <laughs> right? And, uh, but I bought it. You should just got the R1. She wouldn't have known. No, it's a she- one mom. <laughs> <laughs> but i bought it I, I put it in the back of my pickup drove it to my little hometown unloaded it and the first time i ever rode a motorcycle was when i got on it and i drove it yeah like i had no instruction if you know and, how to drive a stick you can drive a motorcycle well I, honestly know, or a three-wheeler four-wheeler yeah. whatever right yeah. at the time dirt bike yeah. yeah i never really even ridden a dirt bike yeah. before this i that was my first bike and within Two weeks, I was doing wheelies and fucking yeah. like it. That's what you need, Jesse. You get like an enduro, over. dude. Something that's heavy. That's I'm not going to lie. fucking tough as fuck. I want one just like that fucking victory that's sitting back there. Well, yeah. that is a Yamaha. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't, I don't. That's a great bike. So, but no, I don't want, I don't I want a 200 idea. mile an hour bike. I have an idea. Sure. But I don't want something super light either. Yeah. I want something that if I need to get out of the way, I can roll the throttle and I can get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. So jazz. It's heavy enough to where the wind isn't going to blow me all over the goddamn highway. But I am not a heavy dude. I yeah. don't need a massive bike you know underneath you me. You for need a to- Suzuki Marauder 800. So you need <laughs> perfect no, for you, dude. You need one of two people to allow you to use their motorcycle, learn yeah. how to ride. Well, so luckily I had this really good friend that offered me like two years yeah. ago that he'd let me learn on his bike. Now yeah, exactly. The reason I say it's one of two is because the other one has the donor the, the bike. Exact base, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I let Dave ride my bike. My my bike is a great bike. It's a, it's a 1700 CC. I like that bike. So it's big and it's like off the line. It's fast. The top end doesn't matter. Do you know why I like that bike? Is so I've sat on your bike. Yeah, I've with, rided your bike like the whole nine yards. Me. I've never, I've never. It's, that's, there's that's, my profile that's, that's picture profile is actually you riding <laughs> bitch on his bike. Yeah, <laughs> but I've I've put that bike center the whole nine yards. Yeah. The reason I like that bike is one, if I if I get it correct, both my feet sit flat on the floor, and that's an important thing, yeah. which sure, I helps. like. It wasn't hard for me to get, but you could tell sitting on it that. It's got some weight. It yeah. had the power. It's got all that stuff. The seat was comfortable. It's got everything to where I felt like I was confident sitting on top of it. All of the sport bike shit where the one cheek seat shit and all that, I, I'm just not fucking interested. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, but my bike, like until you start it's riding, a, it's an and older then you bike. max out the bike you're riding and then you're like, fuck it. I need a sport bike. I can, can hit 150. I can hit 180. <laughs> That's like, what happened to my ass. My, I got my, that little Suzuki that I was like, I want a bigger one. That's how I got my chopper. Then I was like, Bleh. yeah. I, I sold that one, one, and then I was like, I need a faster one. So well, I got the well, 1200 kit on the fucking on the uh, Sportster that was all like ca- cafe racered out. I was like, this is me. Then I was like, but then I had kids, and I was like, I'm gonna die. So <laughs> I just stopped. I just stopped buying motorcycles. Like yeah. the Warrior, I think is a perfect bike because it's it's 1700 cc, so it has a lot of power. 
Sure. It's not super heavy. It's a, they quit making them in like 2008, I think. Um, but the looks of it, it uh, looks modern yet. I it's a wanna, great looking bike. I still and, want a Vespa. And you can buy them for $5,000. <laughs> it's a great looking bike. Like it's a great bike. But even like, I don't know how to ride, but on top of that, I felt, I felt confident on top of that bike. And yeah. I think that's like learning how to do it. I think that's probably going to be half the battle. I just want like, one with a sidecar. That's all I want. <laughs> I want a fucking sidecar. Those, those are easier to learn how to ride. Yeah. Now, one at the way. same time. Sure. The other way, it's hard. <laughs> you turn one way, it's great. The other way. <laughs> <laughs> at the same time, I've gone fast. Like, I've done all that kind of stuff. Like, sure. I, I like vehicles. I've gone fast. I've had cars that go really quick. I've. You need a bike that's quick, not fast. Which is actually why I had so much fun in the Mini. Is that it's not a fast car, but it's a very quick car. Like, when you don't have to brake for anything, when you live in a city like ours, it's a great fucking car. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, I had this conversation with Jim yesterday about like he lives in New Braunfels and New Braunfels. There's some guy in New Braunfels that owns a Bugatti and he's can't, like, can't confirm. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing with this thing? All the roads here suck. There's nobody to fix it. <laughs> yeah. And the only highway around here is 35, which is a fucking parking. The cool lot. thing yeah. about the guy that owns a Bugatti is we've all seen it. Yeah. So he drives it. And which he does oh, drive the shit out of that. Thing. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's like that. a, it's almost a million dollar. Oh, more than so that. I'm those never, Bugattis I'm, are like two and some change. I'm never in fucking yeah. New yeah. Braunfels and I've seen that guy. The yeah. funny thing <laughs> is, is that those Bugattis, even the like 03, 04, 05 ones, they've only gone up in value. They're yeah. like $2 million. Yeah. There's actually, there was a, so there's a place here in San Antonio called Moretti's Fine Jewelry, and they are truly a fine jeweler. So this is not the whole like, I got a Chris, I got a Valentine's Day. You don't go there for that shit. Like, yeah, yeah. this is, it's all high end. This They're is, a certified I'm, Rolex I'm dealer. I'm spending like, fucking five months pay on a ring for my girl type of shit. And it's, yeah. And you don't even go there if it's that kind of shit. Like, this yeah. is like, oh, I want to order a one-off custom Rolex. You go deal with Moretti's. Like, so... But there's a guy there named Mike Moretti. And back in the early 2000s, uh, we all know the shop. There's a cigar shop here that had a place in the quarry. And Mike Moretti used to go every day and he would show up in his Ferrari. And and it was always filthy. And I mean, yeah. like. That's awesome. Just as dirty as any of our trucks sitting right. outside. Just fucking filthy. <clears throat> right. And I'm sitting outside smoking a cigar one day and he pulls up in that thing. And I was like. Man, I know you don't know me from fucking Adam, but one of the things that I respect is that your Moretti, your fucking Ferrari is always dirty. And I was like, I know who you are, but because I've asked about yeah. the Ferrari, I didn't give a fuck about him, but yeah. I liked the car. And, and I was like, but it's always dirty. And he was like, are you fucking kidding me? I backed that thing down the driveway to get the mail. Like anything, <laughs> any reason I have to start that yeah, car. driveway is a quarter mile, but yeah. whatever. He's yeah. like, any reason I have to start Probably, that car. Yeah. I drive that car and it, it it was like if you drove by Moretti's fine jewelry, it was parked in the parking lot like you'd see it anywhere. He, that was his daily driver. He drove it all the fucking time. And it was like as a car guy, I respect it. I know I'm not a car guy. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but as a fan of pretty like car enthusiast, as a fan of pretty self-propelled vehicles. It was great. It to didn't see come out until 69 jazz. Fuck, God. I'm sorry. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, well, uh, like the guys who buy that, the expensive cars and like keep them and don't drive them. Right. Just rub them with When they Ferris Bueller it and it's like he never yeah. drives it. He it, just rubs it with a diaper. Said, it's like, yeah, you. said it for years. It's like having the hottest girl in bed next to you and you don't fuck her because you're saving her for the next guy. Yep. Yep. You just cuddle. Yep. Yeah. That's it. You, like, just oh. cut, you cut her your million dollar I, I hope I hope, I hope, you, I hope you're worth a lot for the next guy. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, and that's it doesn't my, make sense to me. And that's my obsession with like, motorcycles fuck that bitch. is one <laughs> with but with bikes, it, like Ugh. even a slightly personalized bike, it still ends up becoming your bike. And I think that's the big thing that I'm attracted to with bikes. And it does take it's far more of a connection between the person operating yeah. and the vehicle itself. So I've driven fast cars. I've had custom cars. Like I've, I've done the whole nine yards, but there is something about motorcycles where it's, it's, it's very personal between the rider and the bike because it does take so much more. I think to in operate a, that thing. In a, like, I agree with what you're saying. I think in another life, I would l really thoroughly enjoy being a bike builder. Yeah. And making like, it'd be like custom guns, yeah, right? Like, same thing. It, like I would like just to like, 
Yeah. I got into it and then build, went down the gun route with yeah. you instead I mean, of yeah. doing the bike shit. Yeah. I mean, isn't that, isn't that <laughs> well, that was your whole intention when and you went through the... That's essentially what yeah. Kibby does, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. No. Well, yes. So, that's so Kibby's, Kibby's side full-time gig, gig is yeah. he's a welder. Sure. And he fixes... He pushes a button. <laughs> now. He's a CNC welder. But, yeah. yeah, he's a CNC welder. But before yeah, that, he was a legitimate welder. And he did titanium welding and stuff, but he fixed like fighter jets. Like... No. But he has... A shop that's about as big as the warehouse portion of Warfighter. And he does he does work on people's bikes personally. So yeah. that's like his side gig, which is where I was almost gonna get my first bike. Yeah. yeah. Was he had gotten yeah, I remember this that. I he had gotten that. this bike when you were working out of New Hampshire. Right. And it was yeah. like, well, I'm in Connecticut. Like, we'll get this thing, I'll build it, and then one time just get it one way and then yeah. just ride it back. Yeah, like, you, you'd have definitely learned how to ride that. Uh, yeah, that'd, 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 that'd have been a drive. And then somebody yeah. offered him triple what I was going to pay for it. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. take that money. Bro. Go ahead, buddy. Like another one to come along. Um, but I, that's my obsession with motorcycles is, is the whole, as somebody that's a fan of just vehicles, motorcycles just have a far more personal connection between the rider and the vehicle itself. Yeah. Cause I, I'm sorry, but, Anybody with enough money can go to like Coda and rent some fast car and fucking go around the track. And because you drove your fucking Camry there, you can still go fucking drive that car. Bikes are a different beast. Like it's just a, it's a completely different world when it comes to it. And that's why Luckily, I've always been and somehow just have never gotten around to learning how to ride one. So on my two weeks of leave during Iraq, I came back to Fort Campbell and we rented a victory for the the two weeks or a couple days anyway i don't remember exactly but we rented a motorcycle uh just so i could go ride yeah on those on the and it was it's, great two-wheel therapy yeah if you guys awesome. don't ride and you're thinking about getting into it go take one of the rider safety courses they're a couple hundred bucks but they give you a motorcycle to use to learn it's true and go rent one and go ride go ride for a weekend yeah, see you if you rent, like it you can rent bikes just like a cars. couple hundred bucks a yeah. day yeah it's and so go ride it. for a weekend. And if you fucking fall in love with it, go get a bike. It yeah. will literally, it'll change your life. Yeah. That's the other reason I want to get one is I live, you know, seven miles from my store. There's a Ninja 650, dude. And 2014 not, is 650 for five grand. I don't grand. want a Ninja. Nope. I, I literally, I don't want a sport bike. You don't want, want the, you don't want the fifties. You want a 600. You want a thousand. Yeah. When they made the seven fifties, that was back in the day and they're great, but they're old. Yeah. yeah. But if you're looking at sport bikes, you don't want the fit. I'm not gonna like the old like full fairing Jixers. I'd probably get one of those just because they fucking look fantastic. But the, the new sport bikes, the technology they have them is fucking retarded. Yeah, like, I mean, they have there's, launch control, there's they some have traction control, there's some aprilism kind of stuff that blows my mind. I just, I just, I just found but, your bike. What is it? I just found your bike. What is it? 2014 Triumph Bonneville, five thousand okay. miles with upgrades, six grand. And how's the electrics on it though? It's a Triumph. Oh, it's a it's a old school looking cruiser. It looks fucking dope. Oh, that's a good looking bike. <laughs> it looks fucking dope, <laughs> man. <laughs> like fucking that's your there's your bike. But I love my truck, but I live seven miles from my store. The hardest thing in the world to find is a stock Harley. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well, unless it's you go buy a brand new yeah. one. They, even then. And even then they fucked with them on the floor. The showroom yeah. floor. They sold you an intake and exhaust. It got new that's grips. You changed this. Like they're the hardest thing in the world to find is a stock Harley. When I got mine, it was stock. Scott was there when I got yeah. it. And it was you weren't even looking for to buy. A I bike. wasn't looking at all. I impulse bought the fuck out of that. Yeah, thing. you did. But it was a bike that I've always wanted. Yeah. And it happened to be at a price where if I drove it off, a, I got full coverage insurance. I drove it off a lot and I wrecked it. I would have made five grand. And I was like, I, yeah, so I can't say no to, to this. Get, you, <laughs> you motherfuckers need to donate to the Patreon so I can go get a fucking motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> buy some merch. But not, mine is. The, it, was the, <laughs> it is not stock now. <laughs> you Speaking very, of that, Scott, we need to go ride. You have a very pretty You think bike. you can beat me now? I don't know about that, but it'll be fun. All right. Dude, there's a lot the of- The difference uh, is, is your bike's cr- 400 pounds lighter than mine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. How many CCs is yours? Uh, I have a, You have a 102. I have a 103. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So- It's wait. about the same, but yours is liquid-cooled. Mine's air-cooled. Yeah. That's a huge difference when it comes to horsepower. Yeah. Uh, I think my, mine's huge. 96 horsepower. If I remember right, yeah, Jazz, you need to get on Craigslist, buddy. But and look your, at some your of these dry bikes. weight is like six hundred pounds. Yeah. Mine's like nine ninety seven. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big difference, <laughs> huh? I don't know, man. But it'll go now. It's fun. Um, do you break them loose when you take off? Yeah, I can. Yeah, it's I do a, it all the time, and I'm like, oh, it, fuck. well, in Texas you can because the, it's well, like yeah. drifting no matter where you ride. Yeah. No, um, 
But like Phoenix is, well, they used to have all the rubberized asphalt. And so with the heat and everything like that, it was like riding track conditions on the highway. And they have these long swooping turns. It's so fucking nice. Yeah. Especially on like the loops. Yep. But yeah. now it's not. They had to replace it. And they realized that the rubberized asphalt was ungodly expensive and didn't last for shit. Yeah. yeah. And so now they just went back to regular trash fucking roads. The Phoenix went to shit. Phoenix, I used to talk. I used to talk up Phoenix. It's beautiful. It's clean. The roads are nice. Everything's fucking manicured on the sides. Everything looks nice. Yeah. Now you drive through there and it looks like you're going through any other fucking major city in the United States. Oh, it's a that's, fucking shithole. That's that's the that's the roads are fucking trash. That's disappointing. The traffic disappointing. starts at two o'clock on Tuesday and it ends the following week. Like it's horrible. <laughs> it's sucks, fucking man. horrible. <laughs> Justin, where are we at on time? One thirty. Oh, about, about time we fucking wrap this bitch up. Yeah. Well, I tried to when I mentioned the Patreon thing, but everybody just fucking kept going. Yeah. Well, well you mentioned the Patreon and then you went and pissed. Wait, what? Man, like, gotta pee. Hopped up. I thought you just wanted a motorcycle. I do want a motorcycle. Fucking hit the Patreon. Yeah. Right. God. <laughs> Trying to get a motorcycle. Yeah. I need shocks. The fucking. <laughs> the fucking links in the description. I'll God put, damn it. I'll put Dave fucking. Needs front I'll put seals, Freedom like. Friends livery on it. And shit. I'm gonna fuck. Right. No, <laughs> actually, no bullshit. Dave really does need fork seals. So if anybody <laughs> wants to donate to the Patreon, Dave needs fork seals bad. You know, yeah. what? I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to his boss. See if I can get him a raise. Yeah. Good there luck. You go. <laughs> He's on commission. Yeah, talk, he just needs to fucking talk, work harder. Talk to Dave. <laughs> Tell no. Dave he needs to work harder Dave, for his race. Dave's his own boss, man. <laughs> it's probably a great conversation with somebody that used to be a cigar rep. I'd probably... Like, so it's brought to you by warfightertobacco.com. Go to warfightertobacco.com. Use that code FTFO. That'll score you that sweet 15% off. Ohwellness.us for all your CBD needs. They got the tinctures. They got the, uh, the freeze gel, which is... Still, to this day, I stand by it. It's I right. bathed in that shit after my fucking yeah, bro, 14 hour road trip. So fucking it's good. It's sitting underneath dude. my bar right now. Yeah, it's so fucking good. Uh, use that code Freedom Friends 25. That'll get you a quarter off your order over there. And Icy Tech Coolers, use that code Freedom Friends 10. That'll get you 10% off. Otherwise, three little things, boys. Not hard to do. Well, first, I'm going to raise my glass. Fuck. <laughs> well, aren't you going to tell your mom? And tell your friends. And tell, tell your, your mom's friends, mom's friends that I raise my glass to all of you, yeah. and thank you for being my motherfucking freedom friends. Yeah. Uh, three little things, boys. Not hard to do. Words to live by, if you will. Gary, why don't you shout the first one? Smoke on, boys. Drink, Drink on. on. And goddamn it, kids, freedom, freedom the, the fuck, fuck on. on. We'll see you later.